Welcome back everybody, this is Brother Meat here today. We're going to continue on our quest with our new Sword Saint Dora. Uh, we are about to purchase, or rent, or whatever you call it, our two mercs. And I have their builds already pre-planned out, so we're going to talk a little bit about them and their backstory. So first we need, of course, to take a rest. Uh, we'll probably have a little magical chat through the night. I remember we are using mods, so we have turn-based... Uh, remove area effects, Elder's Arcana, Highlight Learnable Scrolls, and Bag of Tricks will probably be the ones that you're probably going to be seeing a lot of effects on. So let's actually close this up. Continue. It should be us upstairs in Oleg's place getting ready to take a knee. So I want to make sure that everybody has the spells that they're going to want for the day. Remember, we don't want to level up until after we purchase our mercs because if we are level 2, they cost so much more. That we could probably only afford one, if that. So we definitely want to rest uh, and then level up after the fact. Uh, books. He's got the one he cares about. Harem. Are we cool with what you have? That one always gets turned into like a healing spell. I rarely need to use a uh, true strike on him. Uh, I do like Bane and I do like Bless. We may not even take him with us after we get everybody, but we'll see. And Lindsay's spontaneous caster, so we're fine. All right, so let's take a knee. Wake up from a nasty dream that tortured you almost all night long. And if you saw a wall of unnaturally thick fog that surrounded you, slowly moving closer and closer. A quick look out of the window and you find out that the fog was not a figment of your imagination, not a dream. And then... Hear me. Please hear me. Can you hear me? Please. The half-transparent outline of a beautiful nymph appears before you. Even in this ghostly form, it's clear that she's exhausted. Her shoulders are slouched, and her large blue eyes burn within her pale face. Her voice is barely more than a whisper as she reaches toward you. Seems that only you can see or hear the nymph. Who are you? Who am I? Just a tear shed by the land itself. The bitter sigh of nature. I am a nymph, the guardian of this area. A defeated guardian. Call me the guardian of the bloom, if you wish. I just want to point out the fact that everyone's sleeping above the covers like some psychopath. I mean, really, guys? Cover up. What the hell, you hippies? Anyway, moving on. I'm glad my adventure begins with such a beautiful sight. Beauty is so tender. It can so easily be crushed under the blows of cruel fate. But you can save it from being undone. What do you want from me? Aid. Salvation. We have a common enemy, and long have I searched for someone who can defeat him. The one you call the Stag Lord. As a storm strikes ruthlessly with gusts and lightning, the Stag Lord wreaks havoc with the swords of his servants. And not just in the world of people. The land also suffers from the evil he brings. My forests and my flowers suffocate in this fog. Soon even I will vanish as the last ray of light fades at dusk. The Stag Lord is responsible for the fog? Yes. It hides his fortress as well as his dark deeds. But while responsible, he did not create this affliction. It is the work of a powerful druid who has betrayed even himself. I know not why the powers did not leave this renegade, but even I was unable to defeat him. How can I help you? This fog... It enshrouds, entangles, suffocates. If only I could learn how it was created. But my powers wane. I have barely the strength to call out to you. All I know for certain is that somewhere in this forest lies an old house. And it echoes with the remnants of a strange power. The Stag Lord and his druid were there. The fog hides this place from me, but I can point you to the bandits' camp near the Thornford. Make them tell you where this place is. Go there and listen to the echo. Catch the whispers. Search for anything that can tell you how the fog was created. 
Once the fog clears, nature will breathe again, and you will be able to easily find your way to the fortress of our mutual enemy. All right, I understand. Farewell. I don't believe in fate, stranger, but our meeting seems more than a coincidence. The nymph's whisper fades as she disappears. Well, all right. Now that should be an upgrade for our quests. Let's check this out. Safe location. There are no threats in this location. It is a sort of headquarters where you can prepare your party for a new expedition. In such locations, companions don't follow you around and will go about their own business. You can speak with them freely to get to know them better. Once you, uh, you exit this location and return to the global map, you'll be able to choose the companions you wish to take with you, leaving the others here. This is how we're going to leave behind some of the team so that I can keep it to a team of four. Remember how I said I was going to do that? So... Uh, we are uh, stolen lands. Keep track of passing time. Set off to the Thornford and the Bandit camp there. And we have go to the trading post done. Yes, us. Protect the trading post. Yes, us. And get some rest at Old Legs trading post. Got that done too. So we're doing fine. Uh, now let's actually head downstairs. We will talk to Svetlana first because she had a quest for us. Do a quick save. So Atlanta says, good day. I hope you're feeling all right after that battle. I can't thank you enough for what you've done. I definitely don't want to waste your time, but if you have a moment, I have a request. What did you want to ask me? So uh, Svetlana lowers her head. This is a very personal request and maybe not important enough for your time. I'll completely understand if you say no, but the first time the Stag Lord's thugs came here demanding money, they also took my wedding ring, just tore it off my hand. It's just a trinket, really, but it meant so much to me. I remember every moment of the day Ola gave to me that ring in hand to ask if I'd marry him. I was standing in a fancy dress on the stairs of my father's home, fearing that I'd misheard something or that I'd say something stupid and everyone around would laugh. Svetlana interrupts herself, shaking her head gently. If you happen to find my ring among the bandit's possessions, please bring it back to me. It's easy to recognize. My name is engraved inside the band. Svetlana drops her eyes, lowering her voice. There is... One more thing. Among the bandits, there's a dark-haired woman who wields dual axes. She's not bad in a fight. In fact, she can be extremely dangerous and cruel. But please, I beg you, show her mercy if you have the chance. I'd be happy to help, Svetlana. Uh, tell me about yourself. How did you and your husband find the courage to establish a trading post in the Stolen Lands? It was Oleg's idea, though I supported him in it. We didn't realize how dangerous it was here, of course. In Restov, everyone respects the Sword Lords, and everyone's accustomed to relying on them. Even the mention of someone like Lady Jamandi could be enough to fend off a street thug or some other trouble. It could maybe even work in some places here, but not with the Stag Lord's men. What can you tell me about the Stag Lord? He's not just some average bandit. If no one puts a stop to him, he'll turn the Stolen Lands into his personal kingdom, a kingdom of fear and oppression. Law for good, it would be a kingdom of lawlessness. Once I've dealt with the Stag Lord, your life will improve. I can't thank you enough for the hope you've given me, but please, be careful. The Stag Lord is extremely dangerous. I have to go. Farewell. All right, so now here is our um, it person who is going to send my missiles back and forth and my payment to receive my two mercenaries. And a real eight eyes. The elf looks straight at you through the tangled hair f uh, falling over her face. Hey, you're an adventurer, right? Seeking your fortune in the Stolen Lands? You aren't the only one of your kind here. Take my advice. Keep your eyes open and watch your back. Sometimes the ones who call themselves your friends are more dangerous than your enemies. Judging by the elf's voice, it's obvious that she started the day with a jug of wine. Who are you? The elf grunts. Anareel Eight Eyes. Once upon a time, I was famous throughout Absalom. Anareel Eight Eyes of the Reckless Six. Well, glory passes quickly. A few miserable decades later, and no one recognizes you on the street anymore. What a shame. Uh, I want to know about, uh, would you like to join me? Uh, no, I've got enough things to do already. You better manage on your own. Uh, I want to know more about the Pathfinder Society. What exactly are you interested in? Um, what, who does the society support? You mean, who does it serve? No one in particular. Pathfinders try not to get involved in the quarrels of others. They serve only the spirit of adventure, and sometimes they happen to save the world. However, that doesn't mean... There are no black sheep among the seekers. What is the purpose of the society? It's a school of adventurers. We search for those who are eager to test their skills, and we educate them and give them ideas about where on Galarian they might seek their fortune. They look for forgotten knowledge, secrets, and lost artifacts. They are explorers and pathfinders. We are a sort of mutual assistance club for adventure lovers. 
We exchange experience, share knowledge, and keep careful records in case it proves useful to future expeditions. And also, we publish books for thrill seekers and bored urban teenagers from wealthy families. What kind of members does the society have? All sorts of adventures. We have representatives from all races, religions, and beliefs. The Grand Lodge is in, is in Absalom, but there are many smaller lodges throughout Galarian. And the adventure captains direct pathfinders to their goals from across all corners of the world. There are many renowned heroes in this society and many scoundrels as well, whose service in this society has brought them fame. We'll talk about this later. Um, what are you doing here? I sit here waiting for adventurers who are in need of help. We may be sitting here in a backwoods tavern, but in Absalom, I have a lot of friends who are eager to make a few coins. They have brave hearts, but shallow pockets. A little gold would be a welcome change for them. I can send them a message, and they will come from Absalom through a portal. If you're interested, just give me a sign, and we'll arrange everything right away. There we go. I need loyal and experienced fighters. I have friends like that. Just decide who exactly you need, and they will come on my signal. It will cost you 500 gold pieces. Now, I don't know if this is still bugged. It used to be that it's, it says 500, but I want to say that they take 250 uh, each time if you're level 1. And then it jumps up ridiculously like that 2,000 or something retarded for level 2. So, again, we are still getting a steal at 500, so I agree. Give it a moment. With all my mods, everything's a little bit slower here when it comes to loading up new characters. Okay, so we're making our first character, and that's going to be our Inquisitor. She will be human. And let's see. What picture can we use? We're definitely going to use a human picture. Oh, I'm trying to remember which one I used the other day when I made this character. Hint as to what kind of weapon she was using. Nope. Boo. Okay. Um, those were all elves still. We're still in the elf. Now we're in the half orcs. Probably why none of the pictures are familiar to me. Let's see. Where are you, Inquisitor Lady? She's going to be a conjurer. Uh, she clearly needs to be reasonably holy looking is she clearly going to wear armor but we are going to do a monk dip that one looks pretty cool but I don't think she has a sword what weapon did I go with for her <laughs> hmm I didn't take one it's a little weird Oh, yes, yeah, because it was a monk. That's right. Uh, she gets the skills. I should point out that she gets the skills of the deity when she um, becomes an inquisitor the, of the weapon of the deity's choice. And the deity we picked is a specific one. So uh, it's an unarmed striking deity. So that's not helping in any way. But someone with a scythe does fit. And I don't mind that. That looks like a decent picture. Uh, so again, we are going human. Clearly she's female. What does it matter with you, game? Come on now. And she's got white hair. That actually doesn't look that bad. Uh, she is going to be a strength-based character. That doesn't mean we make her extra thick. But we don't make her extra scrawny because that just looks weird. So I'm happy with the uh, body type 1. Uh, Face-wise, she looks intense. She looks intense. Uh, and she looks like she's pale as a ghost. But we are going to make an undead, and they're going to be white as a ghost. So maybe not. We'll just make her extremely Caucasian. Uh, she is using her right hand. Yeah, okay. So we're going to make her she's right-handed. Uh, and again, we're fine with that. Now, we are making an Inquisitor. She will be a monster tactician. Sadly, she has this doofus hat on, and I'm not a fan of that. But... Not a whole lot I can do about it for the time being. Uh, so she's got tan, brown, and then maybe white uh, for her outfit. So let's see. Let's make... That's not going to actually translate over well here. Uh, and, and more tan than that. There we go. And then uh, white at the brim. Kind of. I just don't like the fact that the cloak doesn't change colors. But whatever. As soon as she gets an actual cloak, it'll change again. And there is a mod, by the way, for those that are interested because they hate the look of specific things. There's a mod out there that allows you to change the outfit. 
not only the custom outfits for each um, not race, what I want to say, uh, each class. There we go. Uh, but uh, you can specifically lock in certain things. Like if you want them to wear a crown, th there's a way for you. Uh, there's a crown in the game that has an actual physical representation in this game, and you can just say, no matter what she's wearing, make sure she wears the crown. No matter what she's wearing, make sure she wears this robe or this whatever. And so again, you can be wearing full plate mail, but she looks like she's wearing a robe, and that's cool. I actually kind of dig that. Uh, it still has the same effect as far as the fact that she's wearing clearly plate mail armor, whatever, but that's still a thing. Um, so we're done there. We've picked our class just to show you what we have in store for us. We are not going all the way to 20 with her uh, as a pure bouncer tactician because there's A, nothing here that I care about, and B, while I would lose out on a little bit in the way of spells, I would get uh, one level into Monk, specifically traditional monk because they have the best fortitude will and reflex saves so we're only taking one level into it and it'll be at level two so it's coming quick uh, but monster tactician then monk and then monster tactician all the way till the end uh, weirdly just so we're clear on this when we get to 20 because we will in this build I'm fairly certain uh, this character will not get judgment I uh, tested this the other day apparently it's a current bug it says it's there it does not show up uh, I even gave her an additional trait that allowed her to have three more judgment uses in a day and that didn't work either, so I was quite pissed. So that's a thing. We'll just have to work around that. Uh, but the reason we have her is not only because of the, the deity selection slash the domain that she's going to get, she'll get like a special power. Uh, but she can also summon monsters, and it just steadily gets better to the point where she's actually summoning level 9 stuff by the end of the build. And she's basically going to be our tactician that allows us to slap out monsters at a moment's notice. Uh, remember, this was the character that, as my character, Dora, was fleeing the city, uh, getting away from uh, his captors. She was the one that was curing him of his ailments while he was uh, scribing his scrolls. So she is a healer, and again, an Inquisitor is kind of like a watered-down cleric, spontaneous caster. One of the reasons I like them so much. Uh, she is going for... Is it Yorori? I have to look to prove it to myself. Yeah, Unarmed Strike. And the reason we're doing this is because it's either her or, uh, I want to say, I am a day? No. Nethys. Uh, both of them are ruin uh, for a domain. You only get one domain as an Inquisitor. And you don't get the spells, sadly, but you do get the special abilities that they provide. Uh, and, you, of course, you get your favorite weapon. Well, the downside is, is a quarterstaff was already a weapon that we were skilled in, so this didn't do us any good. It's not like you get weapon focus in it or something like that. That would have been amazing. Uh, so, if we pick... Um, Rory, she gets improved unarmed strike. Again, not particularly useful. Yeah, I can use it right now at level 1, but again, once I get to level 2, I'm going to become a monk, and I'm going to get that for free anyway as a monk, so neither of these is helping. The downside, again, is the fact that I am specifically doing this for the reason of Ruined Domain. Um, they make a very cool thing, uh, a spell or spell-like ability called Blast Rune. It allows us to cast either an acid, cold, electric, or fire uh, mine, if you will, like a trap, a magical trap on the ground. Uh, notice that it does 1d6 points of damage of whatever type that we pick, and you do pick it when you summon it. Uh, and it does uh, 1d6 plus 1 points for every two levels. So obviously we're only going to level 19 with this build, so obviously it round down to 18. Uh, divide by 2, so that's 9, so it would be 1d6 plus 9 in our best case scenario. Um, this is more helpful than you think, and you get it for a number of days equal to 3 plus your Wisdom Modifier, which is going to be your main stat. So she'll have multiple castings, if you will, in, in a day of just this ability. So when you need fire damage just to hurt something, poof, here you go. When you need acid to take out a troll, boom, here you go. I commonly forget that I have these because I'm busy using my pets and swinging my weapons. So this is a really nice uh, extra bump, if you will. Not amazing damage, but for the early levels, it's pretty awesome. And the other ability, I should point out, remember, domain spells you do not get, so don't even look at those, which is a damn shame, by the way. I really wish they'd allow you to have access to 1 through 6, because that's as high as we can cast, but whatever. Warding Rune is our other ability. I've yet to try this out, but it appears to be interesting. Uh, it says, any creature entering a 5-foot area around the Ruin must make a will save, or they will not be able to attack. So basically, this is like a, a, a sanctuary type spell, where you literally you cast it, and it lasts for a ridiculous amount of times, like one hour. Oh no, the rune lasts a number of rounds equal to your level. There we go. Uh, so maximum for us will be 19 rounds. Um, you can use this ability once per day at 8th level, and one additional time per day at every 4 levels. So 8, 12, 16, and we will not get it at 20. 
Uh, so we will have, you know, three uses in a day. Again, if you need time to, you know, buff up, this is a good way to, you know, slap something down instantly that will allow your team to take the time to get you know, ready for the fight. Uh, obviously, we're going Inquisitor. Now, yes, I can go Monk. That's silly because you're only going to get one level in it. Or I could go any. Uh, the downside of this is I want to say it's only hit points that you get. So you don't get to get um, skills, and we like having the skills right there. So otherwise, it'd be hit points at every level. Um, we are interested in Wisdom to 19. Uh, we want to have Strength to 16. I want to have 13 of these. 13 of that. 10, 19, 7. Now, the five points that we get as we level up to 20. One goes in Dex, one goes in the Con, and three go into Wisdom. So it'll be a 22 by the end of the build, a 14 and a 14, just so we're clear. Yes, she's not very charismatic. She's an Inquisitor. She's supposed to be an intimidation person, in my opinion. She's not supposed to be pretty or charismatic. She's supposed to be domineering. And as such, we can pump Persuasion and you'll get that up. Uh, as far as the skills are concerned, just so we're clear, by the end of the build, her athletics will be 20. Her mobility will be 3. We don't work on that yet, but that's going to be because of her monk stuff. Um, nature, religion, and perception, because they're the wisdom stats, will all go to 20. Uh, persuasion will be at 20. And use magic device will be at 15 by the end of the build, as far as how many points we invest. Uh, mobility will get 3, just so we're clear. So again... That's the overarching build here for her. Um, we have to be careful with her because we have to pick spells. Uh, the good news about this mod, Eldritch Arcana, that we're using is as we pick spells, uh, once we get to a certain level, it will say, hey, do you want to refund any old spells? You can just say, no, I want to keep them all. Or you can say, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So you can pick spells temporarily speaking and know that you're going to swap it out later. Don't get crazy now, because you're only going to be able to do this like four or five times as you level up, maybe maybe six, and that's about it. So you're not going to be able to swap them out in a moment's notice at any given time. But, for instance, I'll give you a, a, a what if. I'm going to get Delay Poison on this build. It's one of the only characters that I have that has the ability to do so. Since this is going to be my triumvirate, my team of three, I want to have all my bases covered. Delay Poison is an amazing spell, but it's a single person spell. You cast it on one person, me, my pet, my friend... That's basically it, but that's multiple castings that I'm wasting every time we fight. Or you just cast it on the main quote-unquote tank and hope that he or she can tank. That's fine, but eventually she will unlock the ability to cast a spell called Delay Poison Communal. That's an AoE version where everyone's just as buffed. Now, it doesn't last as long, but it's, and it's a higher casting, but once you have that one, do I really need Delay Poison anymore? See, no, I really don't. So then I can recycle that spell out and get something more useful. That's what I'm talking about. And that's an amazing addition, in my opinion. Uh, as far as feats and stuff is concerned, let's actually talk about her drawbacks. So first off, she has an emotional drawback, so we can get all three. You have to pick one. If you only pick uh, nothing here, no emotion or no physic drawback, physique drawback, then you only get two traits. So clearly you want to take the, the least problematic stuff in here. And commonly for me, I take Envy, because as long as you have money uh, in the kitty that everyone has cash on them, then you never have to worry about this being a problem. It's kind of nice. And again, it's only concentration checks. The other one is for physique, and it's uh, hedonistic. And again, money related. And again, this is nasty in that it's a penalty to strength and dex. It's basically like you're permanently fatigued. But the moment you get enough cash back into your wallet, the fatigue falls off you. So it's annoying but you just make sure you have cash. So it's again, it's a, it's a no-brainer in my opinion. But we want to do some thematic stuff. So her nastiness is going to be haunted. And if you read it, it tells you what the penalty is. Minus two penalty on spells with the evil descriptor. She is a, not a cleric, but an inquisitor, a holy person. So to me, it kind of makes sense that evil uh, has a better chance of messing her up, if you will. Um, so I do that. Something from your past or dark secret you presently hold makes it difficult for you to ever be at peace and your chronic worry that you might fall to evil influence has become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Now, I pick this not just because I don't mind the penalty and it thematically it makes sense, because of her backstory. Remember, she is a friend of mine, helped me, and is also helping uh, ferry over, she purchased, if you will, the slave that we're basically going to 
treated as our mercenary. We're going to set her free. She's going to join us. That was my friend who was murdered and then raised to be an undead slave. We purchased that person as an undead slave, which will be the next merc we show you. The thing is, is she has a history. In her haunted past, she feels guilty about something. So that's part of the reason that she's haunted, and I'll reveal that as we get farther into the game. But again, it'll thematically make sense to me. As far as her traits are concerned, uh, I wanted uh, first equipment, and I wanted the family heirloom. The reason for this, by the way, is because you really do get not only a plus one weapon to start, which is extremely helpful early on, also we get a bonus to our attack rolls with that weapon uh, of any kind. So, like, for example, if I pick um, a bastard sword, any bastard sword, not just my family heirloom, any bastard sword I pick up, I have a bonus to the swing. It's only a plus one, but that's an amazing increase early on. So now the question is, which one do I want? Remember, just because it's on the list here doesn't mean she can use it. For instance, she has no skill in Bastard Sword, so there's no reason to pick this. She has familiarity um, with any simple weapon. Longbows and short bows. she's not going to be a ranged character. She's a strength-based character. So she's going to be kind of up front. That's why we're making her a monk as well, so she can tank for us. But um, simple weapons include like your club, your dagger... Uh, things like your kukri, I believe, still falls in that category as well. Uh, I think it does. Um, size are considered exotic. But remember, she's going to be a monk at level 2, and size are something she can use. So that's not the worst idea ever. Uh, if that wasn't your thing for her, I would have been just as happy to pick a spear. Not a long spear. They not have a short spear in the list. Nope, short sword, shirk. Nope. So again, we're going to go with Psy. Um and I believe she could use a, sp a long spear because a long spear, I think, is still considered a simple weapon. I mean, it's a giant pokey stick, right? It's like a quarter staff with a, a sharp point at the top. But Psy, and it fits with her picture, so I'm cool with that. And again, I happen to know there's a pretty good Psy in the game. Not amazing, but for her, it'll be definitely worth having. So we're going to take that. Uh, and then from there, we're going for uh, regional. And she's going to be an empathic diplomat. So follow the logic on this. You modify your diplomacy checks with your wisdom modifier, not your charisma. Why? If we go back here, remember our persuasion straight up sucks. Why? Because our charisma is garbage. But after we level up, you will see it won't be at this lane plus two. It'll be much much better it'll be at plus four one makes five three more from the check mark makes eight so she'll be at a persuasion of eight after this level just for picking this so again that's a pretty nice bump for her uh and you may wonder why we're doing that part of the reason is because we're actually going to do cornic and smash on this build we're not going to do dreadful carnage because i kind of think that's cheesy but i do like cornic and smash on many of my characters because it allows the intimidation the shaken effect or frightened if you get lucky and as a result, that's like a minus two to the, the target swing, minus two to their saves. It's a really good way to penalize a bad guy. And it's only one bad guy at a time. Uh, the other upgrade is going to be under Faith. And we're going for Defy Madness. Seems to make sense. Plus one trait bonus on any saving throws against Confusion, Insanity, Madness, and, and here's the real solid point, Wisdom, Damage, and Drain. Why was that important to me? She's a wisdom-based character. If she loses wisdom, she loses a lot of her abilities and gets hosed. So I thought about this and I said, you know what? She is an inquisitor. She's you know, divinely charged, however you want to think about it. So thematically, it makes sense that she's part of this divine madness thing. Now, feet-wise, remember we are human, so we get two. We turn it into three by taking a spell vulnerability. Now, in my other character, remember, he is... Uh, week two abjuration slash cold spells. Remember, that was part of the slaver's uh, way of keeping him in line. Well, she is divine, so to speak. Uh, so to me, it kind of made sense that she was susceptible to unholy or necromancy effects. So she'll take more damage from unholy spells and ones that do unholy damage. And she'll take uh, a penalty to any save that's a necromancy save. So that's the thing. So she's susceptible. But that gives us now three feats to actually use. You see that? So now we're going to take, of course, Spell Focus. We want to get Spell Focus, 
conjuration because of all these cool ass pets that she gets as well as her healing are all conjuration spells or spell like abilities we want to get augment summoning that toughens them up gives them a nice strength and con bonus for any pet that she summons including these ones as well as any that she may have in her spell list which i don't think she has many if any so we're relying on these but that augment summoning is amazing Eventually, we don't have it here. If I show unveilable, I can show it to you. Eventually, we're going to unlock Superior Summoning. Way down the line here. And the reason for that is, is anytime you summon more than one, or could. So you see here, we only summon one. You see here, we can summon one to three dogs or one wolf. That one to three dogs, if we had Superior Summoning, that will turn into two to four dogs. Basically, that's a plus one but not to the single summons. So it says extra planar wolf, that's just one. So it does get to be two, it's only one. So it's really not helpful until you get to level five on up, in my opinion. So we'll stave that off a little bit, but we could grab it if we so choose. Uh, from here though, we want to grab ourselves dodge. And you may wonder why not a combat a attack of some kind, power attack or something similar. The reason for this is that we're going monk on the next level and while I could get dodge at the next level for free, because a monk gets a free feat at level 1, I can also at level 1, instead of getting dodge, I can get something like crane style. And I'm like, you know what, let's get dodge now, and then we'll get crane style at level 2. Eventually we'll get crane wing and crane riposte. That'll allow her to fight uh, as long as she has one hand free, so she uses a short spear or that sigh or uh, unavailable... Uh, what do you call it? Improved unarmed strikes. She'll be able to literally whoopity whoop on guys and still have heavy, heavy armor bonuses. Even while wearing armor. She takes that armor off when her wisdom gets high enough, and suddenly she's going to be a tank. It's going to be amazing. Free spells. Now, the spell picks I have listed, I'm not going to read them all to you, but I'll, I'll read off level 1 spells just so you can get an idea. So, every level 1 through 4, just so we're clear, we're going to grab... The Cure spell and the Inflict spell. Why both? One, obviously to heal ourselves. Two, we can use these to damage undead. Three, we have an undead on our party, and I believe that they need Inflict Light Wounds to heal them. So she's our only real healer guaranteed on the team. I can bring a healer like Harem with us, or Lindsay can pinch hit as a healer, as a bard. But the point is, is I want to know that I have a healer at all times. So that's why I'm getting both of these. Not necessarily right now. I'm just showing you that we will grab both of these at level 1, 2, 3, and 4. So Cure Light, Inflict Light, and then we'll do Cure Moderate, Inflict Moderate, and then the Serious, and then the Critical. So the single target ones. Uh, from there, other ones that we're going to grab here will be things like, we're going to grab it now, Shield of Faith, amazing buff for you and your team. Gives you Deflection. We'll get, uh, eventually, we'll get Bless. That's now another amazing spell. She's going to get Divine Favor, a single person uh, a buff for just herself, but a solid luck bonus for a damage and swinging. It's nice. Uh, and then um, she wants some ranged attacks. She can get your Piercing Scream eventually. Decent damage. Not amazing, but there's an effect there, and that's kind of cool. And um, that's it. But remember, we can swap spells out. So if you see something in here, Remove Fear, for instance, is a very useful spell early on anyway. And if that's something that you think might be a problem, grab it now. Know that you can swap it out later to get that healing spell that you want or whatever. But I'm going to start with a healing spell and I'm going to start off with a shield of faith. I think that's a good way to go. Now we need to come up with a name for her. And I don't know what we're going to call her, uh, but she's kind of like monkey goodness. Um, what does she look like? Eliza. She looks like an Eliza. Follow if you do. Contemplate. We shall overcome. I like that. No contest. Let us be careful. Let us bide our time. I do not find this to be useful. I dig it. So now this is the alignments that she can be. Notice that she's limited because she has a deity. So lawful good, lawful neutral, lawful evil, or true neutral, which obviously is crazy for her. She's on the side of good. Now the question is, is she lawful good like me, or is she more in the middle? I'd say she's probably in the middle. She doesn't care about right or wrong. Oh, sorry. I should say it that way. She doesn't care about good or evil. She cares about right or wrong. She cares about, did you break the law? Period. So she's lawful neutral, in my opinion. That makes sense to me. Our path leads on. Sure does. Now, 
Uh, we won't see her until we actually go outside. Let's grab another character. Need loyal and experienced fighters. I agree. And now we show you the other friend. The original friend. Uh, she is undead. Uh, she has a picture in the elves. Because she is an elf. A very hideous one too. It's very cool. So we have to scroll up for a bit. You'll know her because she's, she's missing like half her nose. There she is. And she's sexy. Uh, her face is already rotting. She's clearly an elf. And the reason I wanted this one is because she was uh, going to use a staff. Now, again, she is an uh, eldritch scoundrel, or will be. Uh, but she's undead, and I need to show you how we do that. So remember, we're taking her elf. And we're taking her elf for a couple of reasons. One, elves have this wonderful thing where, as far as abilities are concerned, they have a plus two to dex, plus two to intelligence, and a minus two to con. Well, remember, if we make her undead, what's the one stat we don't care about? That's right, con. So it doesn't matter that she has a con penalty, but she gets buffs in two stats that we do want. Dexterity, so she can hit with like all her beautiful uh, necromancy ray spells. And that wonderful, wonderful intelligence, because that's what she was, her casting stats going to be based on. She has keen senses, so her perception is higher. She has elven magic, so she has bonuses and protection from stuff. Immunities, of course, to sleep spells, weapon familiarity. So no matter what we give her, she has you know, capabilities beyond the normal character just for being an elf, which is awesome. I had to mute myself there, guys. I had to sneeze. Oh, yeah. But that's our character. Uh, I don't think she's going to be left-handed because she's technically evil, but not really. Uh, we need to make her bone thin. Pardon the pun. We need to make her pale as a goddamn ghost. Like that. She's not green, her eyes are green, but she's not green skinned, so we're going to go with all the way to chalk white. That looks pretty good to me. As far as face is concerned, there's no undead face. Uh, that's not technically true, though. There is a piece of gear out there. I don't know if it's in game. Uh, I have found it in the Bag of Tricks mod that if you wear this hat, it's a piece of headgear. Basically, it's a skull mask, and it really makes your face look like a rotted undead. And it turns you into the undead while you're wearing it. So literally just like we're going to do with her where her con goes to nothing and it uses her charisma stat for her uh, con stat. It's the same thing. Awesome. If it's in the game, that's amazing. You don't have to do this trick. Just find that hat. But this is just easier. Uh, hairstyle. Clearly she's got black hair. Uh, we'll fix the face here in a minute. I want to get the hair right first. She needs long flowing hair. Five. That's not bad. And that's too dolled up. I think the rotted hair looks like that. Um, and face-wise, she's not happy about being undead. I'll tell you that much. I'm thinking that one. Uh, uh, so she is not. Oh, she, sorry, she's a rogue. An old scoundrel to be specific. Uh, as far as the portrait is concerned, she's wearing white, but that's because of the way they had to mummify her for the process, in my opinion. So as far as the outfit is concerned, it could be whatever we want. So obviously we want to go with something dark, some blacks. And instead of reds, I like green. I suppose I can even go for like a dark green. Dark green here. It's just the armbands. Let's make those black. Like that. That's good to me. Now, a lot of people take an Eldred Scoundrel. A, they're, they're lackluster. And and to be honest, they are. They're not the best at the job that we want her to do. She's going to be a sneak attacker. Um, so a lot of people will take an Eldred Scoundrel and turn him into an Arcane Trickster. We are not. And the reason we are not is because there's some feats that she gets only after level 10 of being an Eldred Scoundrel that are pretty badass. See all these cool rogue talents that she has here? Some of these rogue talents can be turned into some kick-ass stuff once she gets to level 10 and on up because of advanced talents. And again, once we get to that high up, we'll show you why. So, yes, we could take her uh, Arcane Trickster, say, at like level 13 on up and just get one of those feats, but eh, it seems weird. Uh, and she does have capstone abilities. Like any main class, she does have something at level 20 that's usually pretty good. Um, she gets finesse training, which means that she'll have three different weapons that she basically 
will use her dexterity, so she doesn't need an agile weapon. So again, I can use like a sigh, I can use a dagger or a punching dagger or something similar. Will be what we pick three different times. She gets evasion, which is an amazing way to protect herself. Uh, she'll get um, the ability to spot traps, a danger sense. So that's extremely helpful. Um, oh wait, these are to avoid traps, excuse me, to avoid traps. I thought she had the ability to see the trap. Oh, there it is. Trap finding, sorry. Trap finding over here. So again, higher perception, just like my Inquisitor with her high wisdom and high perception. So again, we're going to be a perceiving class uh, of, of three people so that we can always spot those traps. She gets weapon finesse for free, like all rogues, I believe, do. Uh, and she has a limited list of weapons, but that's fine. Uh, as long as I can use the size, I'll be good to go. Um, or size, excuse me. Uh, uh, daggers, punching daggers, things of that nature. Um, and again, she has spells. She'll have a proper spell book. Now, she's with us. When she was brought to us, she was again a slave, an undead slave. Um, the Inquisitor that we just made brings her to us. Uh, there is, instead of the tattoo, remember I mentioned there's the tattoo on the forehead, the one that the slave owner has, and that's a mirror image of the one that the slave has. They can activate their tattoo to cause burning sensation in their slaves. The, these tattoos don't work on her because of the undead process. As such, they had to rely on a slightly different technique. So they give her a shock collar. If you have like a pet, then you have like the little uh, invisible fence around your yard to keep them and teach them where they can and can't go. It's kind of like that. With deathly consequences, obviously, if she rebels. But she does have a mind. She is capable of thinking. She doesn't remember much about her past. She remembers that she used to be alive. She remembers that she's undead now. She doesn't remember her death or the subsequent uh, uh, interactions to raise her to be an undead. So there's that little gray area. And she's not crazy, so she's not pissed off. So there is that. Um, so when we bring her to here, we've taken the collar off. We just uh, magically uh, dispel it. The collar falls off, and now that she's not under anyone's control, she is free, even if she is undead. So she's a lot like Jathel right now, except instead of being an Inquisitor that's undead, she's a, a rogue that's undead. And that's the logic that I have for this character. Uh, so she has a rogue. We want to make sure that she has favorite class, rogue, and that she takes in skill ranks. Uh, she's, again, we want to have high intelligence. I'm trying to remember how high I pump these things. And we want to floor that con. Because remember, the moment we make her undead, this goes to nothing. Not even zero, just a dash. And whatever we have in charisma will be useful. So my stats start off at 10, 18, 5 that goes to nothing. Uh, 18 here, 12 for wisdom, and 15 for charisma. This gives us a little bit of a bump with things like our perception. This also gives us a little bit of bump for our will. The charisma you can see is uh, when she becomes undead, this minus three, which is because of this, will actually jump up to a plus two. Our hit points, instead of being crappy five, because of this minus three taking them from eight to five, will actually jump up to a ten. So this is a really nice way. We're going to take one point, put it into Charisma straight away at level four. Two points in Dex, two points of Intelligence in that order, more likely than not, so that we can dual weapon wield so she can, you know, chow, 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 with her little uh, sneak attack abilities. So as far as skills are concerned, we finish at the end where we have, uh, oops, no, wrong one, Mobility at a 20. Uh, wait, no, no. Mobility at a three, my apologies. Uh, trickery is at a 20. There we go. Uh, stealth is B20, so she's our stealthy ninja person, obviously. Uh, Arcana is a 20, and notice that she gets a bonus to it because of her elven magic, so she'll even be better uh, than my main character. So that's nice. Uh, and she has... Oh, what am I missing? World. We'll take it to 20 as well. Perception, of course. We all want all of them to go to 20. Persuasion was 6. But I don't think I need that to be six. And use magic device was at twenty, so we'll put a little bit in the persuasion, a little bit in mobility, but everything else that you see marked already will go up to twenty. Okay. From here, feet wise, uh, first again let's talk about her drawback. So she has a physique drawback, and this is how we're going to make her undead. So first. Uh, there's two ways to make a person undead. So if you go down to Physique Drawback and go to You Were Cursed, you will see another pop-up. Notice that the only one that's over here is Witch's Curse, but if you show Unavailable, you see Undead Curse. 
there's two ways to do it with this. She needs spell focus and necromancy, or she needs to have the deity or Gathoa. So the easiest way, we are going to be a necromancer, so we will do that. But you see we have a deity selection. You don't have to. You can skip it. It doesn't affect you in one way, shape, or form. But you can, and if you just say, oh, okay, Urgatha was my choice, which I'm okay with, because these are the people that basically rest her, in my opinion. Uh, Urgothoa, we go back here, and now you see undead curses there. So literally, this creature is changed by Urgothoa to be an undead. The creature is vulnerable to fire, holy, and divine attack. So she is susceptible to stuff, so be careful with her. Uh, that literally gives you the undead character. Now, if you go back, you see that uh, the fives here. No, it's not. See that? Now we're up to ten. This is exactly what her stats will be like when we're done with this leveling process. And again, you see we have more health, our fortitude's better, and those are all kicking off of other undead creature. The other comes from charisma. So now if, and for those of you, I know we're deviating a bit here, but if we wanted to make this character better, the best, if you will, version of an undead, you'd either be an undead sorcerer, or we literally went for um, a bloodline for the undead, uh, or you could do the undead bloodline for, in my opinion, the Elder Scion, which would be amazeballs. Maximize this charisma to 19, take it from 19 all the way to 24. You will have a tanky son of a bitch that has armor, weapons, spells, all the way up to level 6, man. And that's a lot of oomph in your back pocket. So you can really have fun if you wanted to make a, a solid undead knight or uh, necro lord type person, just to say. Um... But we are uh, working on the fact that she's good, not great. Remember, she wasn't wanting to be undead, so it's not the best case scenario. But as far as her traits, we went with um, Campaign. Uh, and there's a really neat one here. If you go Optimistic Gambler, this is kind of cheating. If you go Optimistic Gambler, uh, it's kind of a roll of the dice. It's kind of a, a tongue-in-cheek joke. There's no dice involved. But basically, if you click here, you see what will it be? And you have all these choices. Now, they're always in the same order. If you happen to click on one and select it, you see it says, look at your stats in inventory or at your class ability usage stats and you will find out your bonus. Or you won't. That's the thing. Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. But that's uh, what you are all about. Benefit. To know what type of bonus you get in advance, right-click the trait like we've done right here and scroll down. So see this? If we scroll all the way down, you get Mastery of the Undead. That's going to be awesome. And what this is going to do for us is it allows her to, at level 1, summon, or animate dead, excuse me, animate dead immediately. It lasts for a minute, and she can do it like once or twice or something a day, whatever, it doesn't matter. So she can literally summon a horde instantly. This is why this is awesome. There's other ones in here just to show you like a couple others. Like uh, I usually grab this one for undead, obviously. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is a good one. I can't remember if this is for Magus or for... Uh, for dodging, evasion, something that she's going to get for free anyway. This one here, number nine, nine, is a good one for giving you true Magus. Now, obviously, this is why I say it's cheating. This is true Magus at level one. That's the member of the toggle. That's a plus two to your swing or a plus two to your spell pen or a plus two to your DC checks. That's nuts. That's, that's quite crazy. Um, I would use this, if I were to use this, I would use this on a character like a dragon disciple that's not getting true Magus even though they should be, um, I would give this to them back. I would take it at the end of the build, like at level 19. I would get additional traits, and then this would be the thing that I would roll. Uh, there's other ones in here, though. True Mutagen. Again, it's something that only shows up normally for level 20 for a um, alchemist, vivisectionist, whatever. Um, you can have it at level 1, which, again, is definitely crazy, and I would not do that. But I don't mind the summons, because I just think that's awesome. And again, it makes perfect sense. She is literally the focal point of uh, undead magic. So it's perfect for her that she can literally summon those animate, uh, animate dead guys. Uh, for the other ones, though, she grabbed... Um, combat. Blade of the Society. Okay, Blade of the Society. So this what this one does for you. Uh, we get an extra sneak attack die. It's not... It's weird. It's not sneak attack die. It, it, it's the same principle. 1d6 of damage, uh, if you catch them flat-footed and blah 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 But it's not considered a sneak attack die. What do I mean by that? Um, if, for instance, if you needed to become an arcane trickster, part of the requirements is you need two sneak attack dies. Here's one. Here's your second one. 
third, fourth, and fifth. So obviously you'd have to go this high or higher. This will not give you a second one, so it's not here and here would be two. That's not going to work, I don't think. Um, and I say that because there is a feat that you can pick up and once you have sneak attack damage. Uh, obviously, again, this one doesn't show up to level three, but once you have sneak attack damage, you can pick a feat that gives you another die instantly, and it's called uh, Accomplished Sneak Attacker. See that? Once you get one die of sneak attack damage here at level three, you can pick this feat. Now you'll have two. This is the typical way people would take this character to Arcane Trickster sooner. We're not going to do that. Again, we're going to go Purist, which is probably not the best idea, but I don't care. I still think it's a solid choice. And um, I point this out because uh, this little ability that we just gave her, where did it go? Blade of the Society. This unlock, I can do this for any character, a fighter, a wizard, a whatever, and I will get technically one sneak attack die at level three, right? Having said that, it will not unlock this feat. That's why I say it's, it's sneak attack, but it's not. It's not the same as these guys, but it behaves in the same way. I know it's weird, but just know that you can be a sneak attacker, but only like 1d6. Um, this one's nice, though, too, because it also gives you a bonus to damage on your sneak attack. So, again, it's not just 1d6, it's 1d6 plus 1. 1d6 plus, or 2d6 plus 2. 3d6 plus 3. And, again, by the time we get to here, it'll be 6d6 plus 6 damage. It's not amazing, but that's nice. And, hey, man, I'll take free damage, so I'm not going to complain. So that's what I got there. For this other one... We're going. I uh, was going to grab a uh, regional trait and get meta magic. Having said that, I don't need it because I'm not going to actually have meta magic in this build. It was too tight of a build to get it. So, what can we replace it with? Well, let's think here. Soldier traits. Avid reader. Fast talker. Child of the streets. Trickery bonus. Mm. Man, yeah, suspicious perception bonus. Man, magic traits. There we go. Okay, remember her charisma is decent, but not amazing, right? Use magic device cues off of your charisma stat normally. Well, if you don't want to, you can do a magic trait pragmatic activator. Uh, while some figure out how to use magical devices with stubborn resolve, your approach is more pragmatic. You may use your intelligence modifier for use magic device checks. So already she's at a... What is that? Plus four, plus five, three more. She should be at a nine when we're done leveling up. Uh, no, eight, excuse me. Should be at a plus eight for use magic device, not plus six. So again... Uh, because it's keying off of this stat, not this stat. So that's nice. And, I, and that makes sense to me that she's that good with magical devices. Uh, from here, uh, we have feats. Remember, we need to make her susceptible. So we can get two feats for the price of one uh, by making her spell vulnerable. Now, what do we make her vulnerable to? Well, obviously not necromancy. But if you see necromancy, just like our Inquisitor, uh, unholy is the weakness, right, in necromancy spells. So obviously we don't want that because she is a necromancer. So we want the opposite, in my opinion. Well, which one is the opposite? Well, here's transmutation slash divine. And that, to me, smacks of opposite. So she's susceptible to divine magic and transmutation magic, which there's a decent number of those spells out there, so be real careful with this. But this is a solid way to get two feats. So for our two feats, remember, she already has weapon finesse, so that's awesome. Uh, then we want to get point blank shot, because she is going to be a ray caster. Uh, and then we want, of course, our spell focus that down in necromancy so we don't forget that her main focus really is in being a necromancer so that's our feats to start off boom now she gets spells now unlike me who had magic carved into me uh, she will just get the spells that she gets as she levels up so she gets these seven spells so now what spells do we take well again she's a necromancer so cause fear and again she's going to get all of these this can be scribed. So once we find these spells, we can scribe it into her spell book, and we'll have a huge spell book. But you want to have some necromancy spells. You already have a bonus to them, right? So we'll take a couple of those. Let's get a nice snowball because, again, uh, she can shoot ray spells, and she'll be good at them. Um, and this is a ray spell. So is Ray of Sickening, by the way. Um, everyone likes Magic Missile. She doesn't have any armor, so Mage Armor is kind of a must, and I suggest Shield Spell as well. Uh, and then from there, just kind of what you feel. 
Oh, how about we grab, oh, what? No, 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 oh, reduce person. Oops, sorry, there we go, reduce person and shield. She gets a, a bonus to dexterity and being a teeny tiny person. So this is a nice way to, for her to armor up. Boom, 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 and she's just our tank short term. Now, what do we call her? So she's not a lich, she's more of a proto lich in my opinion. Why do I say that? Because she's not getting full casting up to level 9. Plus, she did not do the ritual herself. It was forced on her. So, she's clearly a lich in training, if you will, or a, kind of a like the kindergarten version, I guess, if you will, of a lich. So, she's good, just not great. Now, All I see is blackness. That's kind of evil. The road calls me. I'll take the bait. Let's move already. Out of my way! I like aggressive. Now notice because she has a deity choice, we've limited her to either lawful evil, neutral evil, chaotic evil, or true neutral. I'm actually going to take true neutral, and here's why. There's gear in this game that's based off of alignment. There's stuff for monks, for example, that there's a robe that it's if you're a lawful good monk that you get this kind of a buff. If you have a lawful neutral monk, you have to wear a different robe, and it's a slightly different buff. And if you're lawful evil, you get a completely different buff. Same uh, applies for true neutral. There's a piece of gear or two out there that if you're true neutral, you're the only one that can wear it. So it's kind of nice to have a character that is true neutral so you don't have to throw that gear away. So this is our character. I won't take that. Now, I've done everything I want to do there. I know this video is already going on long, but I want to get on on the open road. We need to first talk to Bakken. So much air. Sell that gear to him. Keeping the torches. Remember to keep anything you might want to pass on to your peeps. Uh, so, you know, not sell the masterwork stuff. If we even have any. I'll take that composite bow back, though. Uh, right, I feel good about that. Uh, ooh, and we have a magic side we can pass on to the one character, so that works out nice. Um... Anything we need? Oh, that was cheap, too. We have to do it pretty good for keeping people on the team. Um, nothing else here that I want to grab just yet. I mean, we'll grab potions and, and spells and stuff uh, later. Wands, uh, but she has the ability to cast Mage Armor herself. But this is a good, cheap way of doing that. So keep that in mind for later. Uh, let's talk to Bakken proper, though. Can I help you in any way? Bakken glances at you suddenly interested. Well, since you're asking, there's a cave nearby. I used to pick berries in there, but the place has been overrun by spiders. The berries are red, look a lot like raspberries. Fang berries, I call them. I'd be real grateful if you gathered a basket of them and brought them back. Just be quick if you do. They spoil quickly. That's a clue, by the way. Fangberry cave has been revealed on our map. Those spiders in the cave are mean. Here, let me give you some alchemical fire. Crafted it myself. Burn those spiders to a crisp. That will teach them for taking over my fangberry cave. And he just gave us six potions of alchemist fire. That's awesome. I also need a bucket of moon radishes. They're a rare and mysterious plant. I don't know where to find them, but I know that kobolds gathered them and valued them highly. It's not a huge deal, really. I'd do it myself if I were younger. But if you're willing, I'll pay you. Three potions for the berries and a purse full of coins for the radishes. Uh, Alright, I'll try to help. Uh, and then we should go. Let's go talk to Oleg. Greetings. Oleg seems to be in a good mood and greets you warmly. You certainly ruffled those villains' feathers. Well, anyway, new day, new troubles. Have you seen the fog? Never seen anything like it before. The road to Brestov looks like someone spilled milk and it just hung in the air. Ugh. I couldn't see anything through that soup, not even with a torch. It feels like witchcraft to me. I'd bet the Staglord's involved somehow. Rumors say he deals with all kinds of bad magic. Uh, tell me about yourself. Why opening a trade post in such a dangerous place? I just dislike the noise, Oleg answers reluctantly. I'm from Restoff. Cities are complicated. Lots of people, and each with their place on the shelf. Bow before this one, fear this other, don't do business with the third, but be sure to be extra nice to the fourth, and villages are a little better. Everyone likes to stick their noses into each other's business. I just wanted a place where I could be my own master, and so I ended up here. I kind of dig that, dude. My families are farmers, and I think they honestly are farmers, quite frankly, because they'd rather be their own boss. Uh, I need to take care of the Stagler. Do you know any of anything that could help me find him? That's quite a task you set for yourself on. 
Uh, the stag lord has a fortress somewhere in the area, but only a few chosen from the most trusted of his rabble are ever invited. The location of the fortress is a heavily guarded secret, and with this fog hanging around, I'd imagine it would be even harder to find. I suppose you could try to follow the trail of those bandits who attacked a post before. They came from the southwest from the side of the Thorn River. The fortress might be there, or at least some large camp of theirs uh, where you can find information. Sounds good. Uh, show me your wares, Oleg. Do we have any I want to have? Nothing yet. I would love to be able to get a bag of holding. Small holding. This will be your bread and butter for a small team like we're going to have. So you can carry more and not have to worry about weight capacities. But it's what it is. Uh, we're not going to worry about any of this stuff just yet. I want to see what kind of gear we have. So I'm going to pass. But let's level up some characters. Level 2 Magus. My skill point. Alright, I want my perception up. My trickery up. Athletics. I'm trying to remember where my points went. Oh, gee, I left, left my sheet somewhere else. Ah, I'll just have to wing it. I know if persuasion's going up. Let's just do that. We know that for a fact. We know that knowledge arcana's going up. That's an obvious. Um, and use magic device always goes up a little. But I'll do, yeah, I'll do persuasion more. Uh, great mobility, spell strike, sounds good. And we'll level up the other guys when we get on the open road. Now there's two ways out of this area. You can either exit up here or you can exit down there. Uh, I'm going to take everyone with us for the time being, because we're going to do a quick run somewhere and come right back. Uh, but it'll give me a chance to level up the other characters. Uh, uh, Hiram and Lindsay and Amiri, and then we can decide who's going to stay with us. All right, Hiram, you're first, bro. We're keeping him cleric, all the way cleric. Um, Hiram is a poor rolled character, uh, for no well, lack of a better description. His wisdom is fine. I mean, he does what he needs to do. He's tough. He's you know reasonably strong, I guess. So he's uh, the cleric that you'd expect. I'd rather have higher strength than Khan myself, but it's up to you. Um, and his wisdom's okay. He's not particularly smart, and he's a little clumsy, so his armor kind of sucks, but he can wear full plate mail, so he's not that big of a deal. His charisma is our issue. If his charisma was 13 or higher, he can uh, be available, uh, eligible, I should say, for a feat that allows him, when he heals AoE style, with that big uh, channeling move that he does, he can heal AOE style and only heal friends. Uh, if he does it like he does right now, he can heal even enemies while healing in combat, which is a freaking bad idea. But therefore, I just use that ability when he's not in co when we're not in combat. So we need to keep everybody alive is the point. Uh, his perception can go up because, again, I always want everyone that can see. Uh, you can see what his skills are actually in with the green check mark. So he's not skilled in anything particularly interesting except for religion. And I got no problem doing that. Me persuasion every now and again, but these will be his main two stats in my opinion. And we don't get much more because again, his intelligence is extremely low. Now that should be more spells a day for him. See that? So now we're gonna do a uh, shield of faith. Because why not? Mary's turn. Barbarian. I like to not do the pre-made. By the way, you can you can just click that and just move on every time. Just click, 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 and they'll just level, level, level. The game automatically knows what to do with them more or less, but this is part of the fun in my opinion, making your characters do what you want them to do. So again, perception's important to her, nature is going to be her go-to stat, uh, and athletics and mobility are solid choices for her, so those will probably be the four that I'd focus on the most. Again, probably a little bit in the persuasion just because. Uh, as far as rage powers, again, if you show the unavailable, there's a whole crap ton that have requirements. Notice how you have you want beast totem you can get lesser beast totem first to get greater beast totem you need to have a barbarian, barbarian level 10 and then beast totem again before it so again there's a lot of stuff that she can get i'm not real familiar with this stuff uh so i just kind of stumble bum my way through the same ones every time either guarded stance or lethal stance better chance for her to hit uh more armor for her while she's raging or go solid swift foot so she just moves faster but with it being a turn-based mode this is not as useful, I don't think. So I'm going to go Guarded Stance. She gets Uncanny Dodge, as all Barbarians do at level 2. Well, Lindsay's turn. Bard level 2. 
Uh, I'm going to make sure that her perception goes up. And mobility. And trickery. And... Actually, you know what? I'm going to unlock all the core lore and knowledge. Uh, bards, most bards, not all, most bards uh, get bardic knowledge, which increases as she levels up as a bard. This stat, this stat, this stat, and this stat get an innate bonus because she's a bard. So if you want to have someone that's reasonably smart, but still have massive stats here by the end of the build, bard is the way to go. Um, I won't get crazy with this, but I'll heavily push this to like a good solid 10, 15 apiece if I can. And then make sure trickery and mobility are in solid numbers. But that's basically her go-tos. Notice that she gets a bonus to mobility for being uh, a halfling. So where it says sure-footed, that's a racial bonus plus two. Again, she's encumbered, so she has penalties as well. But she's a solid, solid character for this. Um, now, weapon focus is a common for her. When people say, oh, well, she's going to be using that heavy crossbow all the time. Yes, this is true. Or a, a light crossbow, either or. But notice that she doesn't have... Um, point blank shot if you do combat trick which is something that bards have here at these spots a bardic talent combat trick allows you to unlock a bunch of different stuff as you can see so she can do point blank shot here i can do weapon finesse and immediately turn her into a melee fighter if i want to but i know her she's going to stay at range she's weak get a nice point blank shot and then get precise shot here and that's a solid solid three levels in for Lindsay. oh uh, for here Spells, again, she's a spontaneous caster, so these spells are always the same. Remember, she can, just like, thanks to this mod, the Eldritch Arcana mod, as she gets to level 4 or 5, she'll be able to swap out one spell. So if you pick something like Sleep right now, it could be amazing right now, and then you'd be like, oh, I don't need that later. Swap it out, retrain it, and then you'll basically get the spell slot back, and you can pick something else from this list. So I have no problem picking uh, Sleep now, knowing that I can swap out of it later. And I think that's a solid, solid call. Let's do a quick save so we don't have to mess with that again. Um, there's our Fangberry Cave. That's a little tougher than you think. We always have this random encounter. This is like the first little um, weird happening that, that pushes you in a specific direction in this game. A jittery old man in squalid clothing shuffles up to you. His gray hair is unkempt, and he continually clenches and unclenches his wrinkled, freckled hands. When he stops and looks up, at you, his eyes widen, and he tugs at his beard. Strange weather. Invisible fog creeping out of the woods. Soars beyond the sky. Obscures the sun and moon. Strange. The old man shakes his head, his eyes shifting about seemingly at random. I don't like this old man. Looks like the kind who can cast the evil eye. And we call it the stank eye. But yeah. Who are you? The old man freezes for a moment. Remus. But that won't help with the fog. What are you doing here? The old man raises a thick eyebrow curiously. I do nothing. Breathe, walk, observe. The fog looks visible enough to me. I see more than ever. I've never seen so much before. The old man wipes his hand across his face and sighs warily. But someone must look, and no one else can. Um, invisible fog, does that mean you can find your way through it? The fog is wrong. It hinders your legs, not your sight. I wish not to try. Um, I should probably go. The old man stares at you intently. You hasten. You should. Your rival wastes no time. He races, but in another direction. He searches for power. He'll find it. My rival? Do you mean Tartuccio? The old man tugs his beard again. He's not tall, but he wants to climb high. Beside him are those who could stand against him, and might yet still. This is your clue that you could sway his two friends that went with him. Remember we lost uh, Jatho and Valerie to helping out Tartuccio? This is your clue that they could possibly join you. What power is he searching for? Someone else is old, but forever young. That which was taken from another, that which gave joy, and now gives death. Can you tell me where he is now? He's in an old tomb, south of the trading post. An ancient tomb has been revealed, and we got XP. Thank you. Uh, how do you know we're rivals? I don't know. I see. You can choose where you set your eyes, usually. But can you choose what they see? All the more reason not to linger. Very well. Once stolen, the land should be reclaimed. Once reclaimed, bound with the claimer shall it be. Bound, merged, joined by unbreakable ties. Claiming the land, claiming its pain, claiming its death. Yeah, yeah, you're doing great, buddy. Uh, I forgot something, though. I wanted to do something once we got our team. Remember, uh, we have options. 
wanted to shut off the XP share, remember? And I forgot to do that when I got my team, so we need, I think it's under difficulty. Only active campaigns receive XP. Only skill user receives skill check XP. Save those changes, if you would. Uh, and I believe... Is there anything over here? Action bar slots autofill. No, I hate that. Um... Enable looting during combat. Pass on that too. So, uh, this is the one that um, I'm gonna save that, and then we're going to close this out. Um, the autofill bars. As you level up, you see that these start filling up with all the spells that you have and acquired. And um, if you, you uh, don't shut that off, it literally overfills with everything. So, we'll put these where they belong eventually, but just to get them out of my way for the time being, like that. Aram's healing abilities. And there we go. Good enough. But um, I wanted to make sure that uh, we stop sharing XP. For right now, again, everyone's going to get the same XP, like always, because it's a team of six. But once I drop down to five or less, then the numbers you'll see are start starkly different. So uh, we are going to... way towards the ancient tomb but there's a spot down here metal's crossing we want to go to it first if you don't you'll get nightmares and every time you try to rest when you have those nightmares you will not rest your main character so you will be subpar and everyone else on your team will be like i slept like a baby and that shit sucks uh, so there's some hidden stuff in this area was not in vain nothing super fancy here there's a magic ring up this way, though, so I will do a little scum saving. Uh, we'll do that trick with Harem. Remember this trick? I mentioned this in the previous video. Buff everybody with this guidance of his. You can literally walk through an area, and when it falls off, if the timer hasn't expired, because it's got like a minute timer on it, then you know you did some sort of perception check in the area. And it's invisible, you just can see it, because it doesn't show you when you fail it. I was that, successful in my search. Everybody but hers fell off, and someone actually found it. Now, there's another one over here, so we got oh, the same deal. Sorry. Just off everybody fun. up. reapply it and it just resets the timer. Okay, quick save again. And then walk over to this corner. I don't like surprises. There's another one. Okay, now I happen to know that both of those places are um, locked. So you want to pick a lock. If and I'm not saying there is, but if there's free XP for picking the lock, who do we want to give that XP to? Do a quick pause and click on this box over here. And whoever moves will be our best uh, uh, lock picker. That's Proto Lich. And remember, she's not level Let's move already. two yet. She's only level one, just like her. So she's already behind the curb. So is this character. So I don't mind her getting no some XP. She still way. has her guidance on. So let's actually have her pick this one first. Boom, that was nice. And she still has her guidance, so it must not have been actually a lock picking move. Where is. Ah, there it All is. this waiting bores me. Oop. Didn't get it. Scum save. I just can't. Impossible! I failed. No, but I'm can't. sorry. How are we doing on that trickery check? Yeah, 27. Yeah, see, for her, uh, she would need an 18. It's okay. We're going to come back to this area anyway. So we just need to remember that it's still here. Um, I don't think there's anything else over here as far as treasure. There's this guy to talk to, though. He's the one that sends you the bad dreams. This little undead bastard. 
Davik Nettle. The corpse's face is bloated from being so long in the water. The stench from its toothless mouth is so foul that your eyes begin to water. The hand clenching a sinister looking spear is covered with scabs. Suddenly you feel faint, as if a cold wet hand is placed heavy on top of your head. Wet hair sticks to skin and trickles of icy cold water run down your face and shirt. A hoarse whisper rises inside your head. There you are. Who are you? David Nettle, a storm of bright images flashes before your eyes. A long time ago, this person, then a living man, came here from Bervoy, constructed a rope bridge, built a house, and lived in it, collecting payment from those who crossed the river. How did you die? You see a vision of a lovely spring day, sunbeams shine warm against your cheeks. Three men approach the house by the bridge, one of them wearing an antlered helm, the stag lord, angry faces, a quarrel, a glint of an unsheathed sword. Suddenly, the stag lord's greedy eyes are twisted by surprise. The master of the house has unleashed his hounds. Ooh, didn't like that. A burning smell stirs you awake to the sound of loud barking. Flames are crawling up the walls. The sound of breaking glass. The bitter cold night air. You are outside, outside the house, and something is wrong. An arrow strikes deep in your shoulder. You hear the guffaw of ten throats. You run, already in the middle of the bridge. The man in the antlered helm cuts one of the ropes. An ear-splitting scream fills the air. Ah, he plummeted to his death. Well, what do you want from me? You see a vision of a man wearing an antlered helm. You hear a muffled groan, and the helm drops to the ground with a loud thud. Your hands are covered with hot blood. Too much blood. Death to the stag lord. This I can do. Don't you hate it when someone asks you to do something you're going to do anyway? It makes me want to do some nothing just to spite them. Um, very well. I shall met your vengeance upon the stag lord. The drowned man who's been sitting motionless nods his head. Come later. Take the spear. So when we kill the Stagler, we come back to here and we'll get his magic spear. Which is pretty sweet. Now, you see that we got, well, one of us, I think, got a big hog and chunk of XP there, 324. Now, Patience. the question is, did anybody I else? Stand ready. She did not. She did not. She's low, low, low. I bet you I'm 324 higher than him. No, I'm not. What? Oh, must have did still averaged out. Also, 324 was across the the team, so that's 324 divided by 6. So that's why. Okay, that's fair. It would have been better if we had had less people than 6, though. <laughs> Alright, uh, we need... to break this video up. Um, so what I'm going to do, because I want to keep recording... Um, but I am going to break it up. So instead of my typical outro where I say, hey, thanks, everybody, subscribe, and blah, blah, blah. We're just going to cut it here. And I'm going to stop the video and then restart the video. And we're going to continue on for another part. Okay, so be right back.